Hey, boy. So this is Squeak Board. What a weird name for an open source keyboard. I wonder why they called it that. Today is going to be the battle of the keyboards. We're going to find out if Plasma Mobile is better. Bosh! There's only going to be one winner and it's going to be based off of four different criteria. It's going to be accuracy, completion, look and feel, and internationalization. Who's going to win? You'll have to watch to find out. I first want to start off by using the iPhone's keyboard as a base comparison iPhones aren't as wide as other phones. That makes the keys skinnier, which can make it harder to type accurately. To make up for this, Apple uses autocorrect to try to correct your spelling. The plus is your words tend to have correct spelling. The minus is your sentences can sometimes make absolutely no sense. All right, let's see how hard it is to add a Japanese keyboard. the settings you just go to general and then keyboard. There it is, the menus are a little deep but this is Apple design. Here it is, now I just need to do a little search and I'm just going to select the Kana keyboard layout. Boom! Look who's got Japanese input. Let's see how well it works. The accuracy on the Kana keyboard is great, just because of the size of the keys. And that's about it. Bravo, Apple! The Kana keyboard input is pretty standard for Japanese. You flick in a direction and you get the different variations of the letter. It's very fast and very easy to use. Notice how there are different word suggestions that pop up as I type. This is how you add kanji to your words. There are more than 2,000 different kanji characters, and this is the only serious way to be able to enter them. Overall, Apple's keyboard is very easy to use. It might not be perfect, but it gets the job done. I'm not a huge fan how it can just put in random words into my sentences, and because it's uh, not a misspelling, it's a lot harder to catch when you're proofreading yourself. Now that we've finished looking at the iPhone as a baseline, let's head right on over to the Linux smartphones. First, I'm going to do Fosh. Um, it's probably not going to be that impressive, but let's walk through it. Squeakboard is the primary virtual keyboard of Fosh, uh, developed by Purism for their Librem 5 phone. It works within the GTK3 ecosystem and leverages the Dbus input protocol. While it's still not very old yet, it is quickly getting new features and growing in maturity. Not too much else to say about it. All right, let's get right in. So let's take a look at Fosh's keyboard, squeak board. You know, the one with a little bit of rust inside. First off, the keys are nice and wide, and that makes it a lot easier to type your letters correctly. Having said that, since there is no autocorrection, it's a lot easier to have your spelling go all over the place. On the bright side, that also means it's easier to proofread when you have mistakes, unlike iPhone. Squeakboard is nice, if not a little bit basic. Because there's no existing virtual keyboards in GTK for Wayland, you can tell they basically had to start from scratch. Alright, let's see how hard it is to install a Japanese keyboard. In the settings panel, you first go to Keyboard, and then you add the keyboard you want. That's not too bad, maybe even a little bit more direct than iPhone. And it's right there, going to select Kana for Japanese. Boom! And let's also add the other Japanese inputs for good measure.
Here are the Japanese inputs in the selections. And the plain Japanese input has absolutely no effect. It's totally useless. Okay, let's try the Kana input. Alright, this is a little bit more promising. What the heck? What is this? Uh, oh, okay. Alright, notice there is no flick input. It does sort of work, but it's a little bit awkward to type quickly. Another thing to note is there's no way to do Chinese character conversion because there are no suggestions for your completion. If you seriously try to use this for typing messages, you are going to look like a little kid to anyone that you're talking to. And this Kana input doesn't really do anything useful either, same as the first Japanese. So lots of useless Japanese input methods. This was all a little bit disappointing. All right, so that was squeak board. It worked okay. The, um, could have been better. Um, not really complete, but works as a technology showcase. I'm sure someday it'll be finished. The Japanese support, they've been working on it for a couple years now. So someday. Uh, next, let's take a look at Plasma, Plasma Mobile's keyboard and see how it compares. Malate is the primary virtual keyboard of Plasma Mobile. It's licensed LGPL2. It is currently version 2.21 and has been around since at least 2010. It's been used in phones such as Nokia N9, Ubuntu Touch, and the One Laptop Per, per Child program. It has multiple features including word correction, prediction, multi-touch, and context-sensitive layouts. The international support is also great too. Nokia originally started developing this for their mobile phones around 2010 and was intended to be part of their Mego OS that was supposed to become their primary OS for their phones. That was later on, about a year later, abandoned. Um, Nigo was spun off into the community, into a distribution known as Mer, and eventually had other offshoots that you may know today, including Sailfish OS. This is the Malit keyboard on Plasma Mobile. Look at that. This doesn't work too bad. The keys are a little bit smaller, but it does have suggestions, auto-completion, <laughs> this is great! <laughs> this feels more like a real smartphone rather than some kind of Linux in a mobile form factor. Now look at that. It even has a smiley keyboard. I bet Squeakboard wishes they had that. time to see how hard it is to add Japanese input. For Plasma Mobile, you just have to search for Virtual Keyboard in the System Settings. It's very similar to Posh. Next, you click Configure Languages, search for the language you want. And that seems to be it. I cannot wait to see how well this works for Japanese. This cannot possibly be anywhere near as bad as it was for Squeakboard. Oh, look at that! Flicking works, just like I expected. Wait, what? 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 Why is this? I can't flick down. What? You gotta be joking. Why is the keyboard moving up and down? Oh my god. Minus 100 points. I gotta say, um, Linux on phone is still very young. I was very surprised about the bugs that were happening on Plasma Mobile. On desktop Linux, I don't have, for about 10, 20 years, I haven't expected to see bugs like that. I expect it to just work. So we have a ways to go, but as the user base increases, 
these type types of things shouldn't be happening anywhere near as much as they do now. I have hope, but um, your mileage will vary, and I really only recommend using it for English like languages that have keyboards that don't need any kind of uh, conversion for the letters as you type. Ugh. So I guess just to summarize my feelings from today, the iPhone is a good baseline for mostly working keyboard. I'm not too much into how they went about things, but it works. The Fosh keyboard, um, squeak board is sort of usable. Um, it's okay as a technical, as a technology preview, but it's not really something I'd recommend for anyone. Um, and then last, the um, Plasma Mobile's uh, Malit, well, it seemed to be working well. I'm sure that uh, in other versions it's working perfectly. I could not believe I hit that bug when I did. It usually does actually work better, but during the review it failed, so minus 100 points. The, um, it also did that same bug for the English keyboard without swiping, so it was for everything in general. It is actually working now, just so you know, in retrospect. And uh, bah, bah. I guess that means that, uh, I guess that means squeak board to the winner. <laughs>